Yeah, then we go to Clippers tomorrow. I'm, I'm, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm afraid of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of that. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's real, real Terry. Terry. Right. Everybody's all excited about the door. Uh, yeah, you know, we're gonna get these glasses out. We're yeah. Sit there. I'm like, nah. I can't wait. No, nah, I can't do that. So I'm I'm getting mine. I don't know about you. You gonna go out then? Yeah. Out yeah, what? I've seen Star Wars and shit. I seen this movie oh, yeah. called, what is it? Chain Apocalypse with the Mel Gibson movie. With the Indians and the Oh, 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 Think me and Shane on Instagram Live, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> no, on Facebook Live. Yeah, 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 Facebook Live. And I was just sitting there getting my hair cut, and I was like, "Yo, why do women cheat?" Mm-hmm. Now the thing is, I get the fact that you know you cheat because of what the man did and all that. No, but let's be let's let's break it down. Let's break it down. Why do they? Because what happened if he's a good guy? Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. But she still want to get off her shit. Gotcha. Right? Why do they cheat? What's the purpose of a woman cheating? Well, I mean, what's the, what's the purpose of anybody cheating? Let, let's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, we, I can't no, do that they, now. Nah. This is not. Nah, because this ain't both, my show. So, no, because it, to be. it goes all <laughs> into the fact of why people cheat. No, no, no. Why do women Strangely cheat? women? Okay, yes. no problem. Alright, alright, because I don't want to be abused on this show. Yeah, you gotta, we gotta find out why, because I feel like I've heard stories. Mm-hmm. One girl told me because the, guy, the man didn't make her squirt. I mean, he didn't make her squirt. Mm-hmm. And all that. Mm-hmm. You know, parental um, person is advising, by person <laughs> and kids or anything like that. But it, it, it kind of, it, it does raise that question. Like, why do they do it? I mean, I, I feel like I think it's because of maybe an attention factor. You know, women do have, you know, as far as the need, as far as the, what they may think of them. You know, right. I still look good and all that. He may come home, pay no mind, mm-hmm. may just jump on her real quick. Uh, uh, uh. Right. Uh, well, well, pee on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah pee on her. That's a good one, you know. I'm I was, just going to throw shit out there throughout the show. I did, I did, I did that. Like, I, no, I'm <laughs> trying to tell you that. I did that before. I did too. Yeah, I, I pee on I did that. Mm-hmm. But um, I was in the shower, man. I didn't know that. <laughs> mm, I, I, did. I don't know if that happened. It didn't even change the sheets. I forgot. Oh, come like, on, did I forgot it. Dried up, forgot oh, it. Two days later, I was like, what's that smell? Hey, come on. That's what happens. Man. So, I really um, just want to get into that fact. Well, I mean, I think, I think honestly, yes, I agree with you. I think uh, some women cheat for the attention factor. I think it's a lot of factors involved where it's attention. Um, and I and I and I think they front and try to play men and make it seem like it ain't about sexual attention. It is mm-hmm. okay, but the weird shit is why are you always holding back? Okay, because women after a while when you're dating them they wind up holding back. Mm-hmm. They they don't want to have sex like they used to mm-hmm. and all that mess. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But then they go talk to their homegirl about their man being too tired mm-hmm. or you know they they acting funny and they act like they don't want to have sex with me. But the man is out here working hard, okay. Mm-hmm. And then that's probably why where you just got your nails done, you work what nine to five mm-hmm. when he working nine to five and then three to elevens and all that other stuff, Ubering and lifting all over the place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then you know, sir, yeah. Then the thing about it is, because I'm the type of person where I'm not a man, I'm all woman, love proud to be one, and I date women, and I have sex with women. So my thing is this, I do uh, I do empathize, sympathize with guys, because I put in a lot of work in the bedroom, like I'm supposed to. Mm-hmm. Gets on my damn nerves how I put in all this work on top of you. Let's weigh it out. Yeah. When do, how often does a woman be on top of a man? When it's time to be sexual. I mean, I'm only asking you because you're straight and you know right. they want it. Right. Then think about it. Men put in that work. 
Women put their work too. I'm not knocking you. So right. I'm not saying you're not riding, you're not sucking and doing all oh that other stuff. God, yeah. But at the same time, what is the ratio between the dominant party in the bedroom doing more work? Because that's the name of the game, dominant party, right. and the submissive joint. So if you're going to cheat, since way out how much work did you put in in order to earn those cheating rights? Because on the bean tip, I mean, I don't think any female should ever cheat on me. Okay? Because I'm just that good. Pisces go over the fishies, last but not least, to make that water wet. You heard me? Okay, so don't ever cheat on somebody that's putting in that work. They put in the work inside the bedroom, outside the bedroom, at the job, on the job, at home. Get out of my face. Women shouldn't have no reason so, to cheat. That's so how let's, I let's break it down. I, I, I've said this before. Sometimes when you work at a job, Mm -hmm. It's the numerous hours you have with people. I feel like people, when you go to a job, you're eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. You're building some type of rapport, chemistry. Right. With another. How strong are you to just work and go home? Gotcha. Because some people spill their own personal life into the workplace. True. Right? To where as though people start knowing you a little bit more at work mm -hmm. and you know you're significant other at home. Right, right, right. So it's like you sit next to somebody and it's all day. Right. Things are gonna be said. Right. Can you hold your water? Can you keep some people just can't do that. Right, right. So you have a girl and she's there. Remember where we say you got work boyfriend, work girlfriend? Mm -hmm. That's it, I feel like it's messed up. Because mm -hmm. now you're going to lunch together. Yeah. And now you're spending and you time, should where you eat at. And you yeah. But then now you're going home. How was work? It was okay. And then it's because you're only spending, but mind you, you're only spending when you get home, what, maybe a couple hours before you go back to work? Right, right. And you only have two days off. Really, you get one because when you count Saturday, yeah. it's Sunday, you're chilling. Yeah. So where's the, the Sunday's preparation? Where's the, so where's the, where's the personal growth at? So where's the growth? Don't do that on the table. I'm just saying, man, I'm just saying, man, where's the grow? I mean, when I, listen, I've been in jobs, where I, I, hospitals, whatever. I had a whole bunch of jobs back in the day mm -hmm. where I didn't heard married women just do some of the craziest things. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow, man, for real? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's crazy, but I always ask myself, it's being like, why do y'all do it? You I like that you ask that. Actually, you know, it made me think about something. What's that? I know someone, I ain't gonna say too much. I just know someone uh -oh. who has cheated on their husband. Okay. And it was crazy because when I was talking to her, she was telling me about, you know, because they, they were basically, uh, she mm -hmm. found out that he cheated on her. He took pictures down in their home. Mm. He even had the kids around, uh, the mistress, all this crazy stuff. Mm. Right? So we're sitting there, we talking. Wait, he had mistress? Oh, yeah. Brought her to the house, took pictures, the photos down in the family home. Um, they had sex in the bed and had the kids. Right? Yeah, their bed. The married, yeah, the married couple's bed, everything. Like, he was bold as hell. So, unemployed while the wife was taking care of him, and she thinking he's looking for jobs, but he uh, he looking up in some Mike Coochie for the classified. So, mm. whatever the case is, she actually said to me about how he cheated. And she said, you know, when I had him on, he was sleeping on the couch the night I found out that he cheated for the third time, whatever, whatever. And so I walked down the steps, and that night, that night, when she found out all the cheating, um, hadn't stopped and even elevated, she put her clothes on, and she walked down the steps while he slept on the couch. And he said, well, where are you going? And then she was like, I'm going out on a date. Now, let's think about that. Your husband cheated on you, mm -hmm. but the night you found out that he really took it overboard, you had a date? So that means mm -hmm. somebody was always around. Yeah, women always have people around. And then she opened, and I said, well, wait a minute, that means you always had somebody around. She was like, well, she said, after he cheated that first time, mm -hmm. I started fucking my boss. Oh, my God. Who was married as well. Oh! Right, and who also was a major politician's chief of staff. Oh! And wound up being directly connected to Obama. Oh! So, like, and I saw Whoa! Like she showed me pictures of boys. She was like, and President Obama was like right there, and he, they were both coming out of like Senate or something. I was like, are you kidding me? Like I was like, yo, this you shit is crazy. You like know, you know, what I, you know what I noticed about women when they cheat. See, they cheat with sense though. 
See, guys, we we, we cheat. Cause this dude, yes. Well, how, Why did you choose that shit yeah. with the purple organ? Right. <laughs> guys, I mean, women when they cheat, they it's a reliable source. Right. It's either the pool guy, cause he cleans the pool, right. the UPS man, the cable man, <laughs> any man that got some type of power, they on it. Because now it's like, well, you know, if I'm gonna cheat, at least I'm gonna do it with somebody with some sense. Mm -hmm. Guys, we don't do that, right. you know. But yet, and still, this is what it, it's always a man in a position of power mm -hmm. that they go for. When do yeah. you do that? It's yeah. deep. It's deep. Yeah. Always position of power they go for. They it's, it's just. And I think it hurts. Them. I heard. I think it hurts their their male partner's pride when they Ooh. when the male partner finds out who it was. Like for instance, in the movie Soul Food, remember? Yeah. When he came home and then like she tried to get him a job or whatever, and then he really he found out like. It was bold ahead. He was uh, the boss the whole time, and that's a that's a stab in the back. That's a stab in the heart to do that. Oh yeah, bird. Oh yeah, no bird. <laughs> that little coke bottle bird. Yeah, he just sitting there the whole time. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. but she shouldn't have did that. Right. Exactly. Oh yeah, most definitely. But she, see, that's the thing that some see. It's okay, Terry. You can put on another song if you want. Yeah, I'm coming back. And then take a breather and come on back. Yeah, come back. It's radio. Right yeah, it's radio. Right come back on the other side, turn to yourself. Cause no more parties in LA. I swear to God, man. <laughs> Stop. Okay, we back. Deli Grind Radio with Terry Simmons Show. We back from the factory in the building. I don't know when we brought Dean comedian and when that. We are talking about why do women cheat. Dean has given us some. Um, what you say? To give us some like. Ideas why they do it, right? Yeah. Like I guess like women of uh, men with power that like pretty much if women gonna cheat, they pretty much cheat for their own like if if they gonna do it, they do it with somebody that's more or less like important. Right. Than suppose to somebody that just lived down the street. Um, still haven't answered that question why? Because mm -hmm. no, why I don't think nobody has an answer to it. See, it's funny because. We can say the attention factor, but that's just open communication. Right. So we can't, I mean, I wouldn't de definitely just say that. I mean, at some point, you know what I mean? It's like, these are the type of things that people don't really have the answers to, in my opinion. I just feel like, you know, it's a thing where as though, people, sometimes, when I hear like people like together like 30, 40 years, 50 years, whatever, come on. Some might. Tipped out. Had to. Yeah. No, he's not. Yeah, 30 years. And you tell me 30 years, you mean just maybe a tip or did anything? I don't see nobody. Think about it. Do you think, honestly, Shane, and be honest with me, do you think if a person is married 30 years, 30, that somebody didn't just take the chance and just dipped out? I mean, it's possible. There are cases where people don't cheat. Really? You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not, not personally. No, I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, I do believe that it is real genuine good people out there. Yeah. I might think this is open. I'd say have an open communication with, you know, who you with. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. if, you, if that's something you decide that you want to do, you need to open communicate with your partner. Especially, you know, when you're out here and you're doing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you got to just can't, you know, dip and dab without saying nothing. But it just all goes back to the fact that you know, women, they cheat, and they cheat very, very well. Very well. They're good. They're really good. Too damn good, Shane. Mm. Too goddamn good. <laughs> yeah, who's that coming in the building? No, we want, I'm going to come back on the other side, man. Um, let me see. I'm going to play some music, man, and then I'm going to come back. Let me see. Anything you want to say, Shane? Anything you want to say before I... I um, so, I don't on. know. I think women cheat for neglect. Huh? Women cheat from neglect. Think that's what it is? Yeah. Usually, sometimes if they feel neglected, they'll cheat. If they feel like they're not getting what they want out of the relationship, yeah, like they'll cheat. Factor, right? Yeah. Hmm. But. Alright. That's the one you usually hear. I think that's the common thing, though. Like, oh, he's neglecting me. I'm gonna cheat. Right. Unless that's just an excuse, and then it's like habitual cheaters. Yeah. Yeah. It's a reason. We can come back to the side of the Tennessee show. Yeah, about to get into it, man. The girl next door, music so child. Also, we have our guest coming up, Max Hunter, hip hop artist. Let's get into it, y'all. The girl next door.
Okay, we back. Terrence Henry Show, Daily Ground Radio. We back and forth, back to me in the building. D, the comedian is here. Yes, sir. Co host, guest co host. So, D, yep. you know, before I get back to the topic, so I was telling Shane, September, I am going to have maybe a different host come up for the month of September. Okay. See if they fit, see if it's something they want to do. Mm. Oh, because I'm big, I don't fit. That's no, I'm not saying it. Was, no. that, was coming in my no. way, yo. That's what they fit, but. See, with a good fit. No. Okay, I read in between the lines no. as a fat bitch. Fat bitch is reading between the lines. No, I'm not saying that, dude. No, I'm not saying that. We can't fit in between them, but I read them. No. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not saying that. So, no. Um, so, September, I was telling Shane, so it's going to be like a you know, trial run. So, anybody Ooh. out there that feels as though they can be a guest, I mean, I'm sorry, be a host, a good co host. On the Terrence Henry Show, um, <clears throat> let me know. DM me, you know, um, through Instagram on um, Terrence Twenty Nine, the Terrence Henry Show. You can also hit me up on the uh, my my uh, Facebook, the Terrence Henry Show. Inbox me or inbox me, Terrence Henry. You know, always to get in contact with me, see me interested in doing it. If you have radio experience, try to send me a resume. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got going on. Let me do. No, I'm not, Brandon, I'm not replacing you, Brandon, but you, you're in Georgia, like, what do you want me to do? Hey, Brandon, what's, what's up? up? You're supposed to be corresponding. I asked you, I said, yo, do what you got to do, call up. Right. You have not, it's the second show, you have not called up, but you watching the show. And you know the number, stop. And you know the number. Nobody's not getting rid of you, so just chill. You can have, like, Terrence Henry, like, Sector in Atlanta. Yeah, like, like yeah, Terrence Henry, Sector in Atlanta. Yeah. Like, you know, why not? He ain't sending me like, you're replacing me already. No, nobody's not replacing you. You good. But we still need another co-host, though. Physically, too. Yeah. Uh, that's all. So, listen, we was talking about uh, why the women cheat. So, I was talking to Shane when he was out. Mm -hmm. your business. Shane said because it could be, ne what, neglect? Feelings of neglect, possibly. Feelings yeah. of neglect. Yeah, that, and, I mean, Shane must get all the ladies because that already <laughs> told you. Because that's what they would say, too. They feel neglected. Yeah, so I right. think that's BS. He's got I think some of that is BS, too. Yeah. I agree. Where's the open communication? <laughs> You want to wait. He, that's why there's always a guy coming home from work, and that's when it happens. What are you doing? You always neglect me. You never said anything. Because, you know, guys, we get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And men are very literal. Yeah. yeah. Literal. We don't and women are very well. figurative. Yeah. Yeah, yep. exactly. So when we come in the house, we know the routine. Right. We take a shower. From the clothes in the dirty, get my clothes ready. I'm going to watch CNN or whatever your favorite show is. Drink some water. You're going to cook dinner. Night, light nights out. Right. If you're not saying nothing, like why you don't come wear it out, then how you know? Cause we right. we get redundant. We just we have a routine, and men get stuck in our ways. Mm -hmm. But you gotta tell us. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I try to do little stuff to let you stop. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot a lot of women they're very vague with their feelings. Um, it makes no sense to me. I, I don't I don't understand. Like I said, I'm all woman. But I'm very open and honest with how I feel. And I'm very, like, Shane said, I'm very literal. I tell you straight up. You know what I mean? I'm I'm feeling, you but, yeah, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. Why you keep rocking your hair like that? You know, I'm mm. like that. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I'm just very honest. Hey, but, yeah, I will. I'm very honest. Stop hey, this. That's what you do to him? Yes, I will tell him. I don't like that. Like, that's not so cute on you. You'll tell a woman, like, if you don't like your hair that way, don't wear it that way. Yes, that is ugly. <laughs> on you, it doesn't look right. You look ugly with that shit. Mm. I don't want to be out here with you like that. Now, I, I care about you this much because they're going to say it too. So. You say it like that? They look ugly? With that shit in your head. You, you can add that too. <laughs> I wouldn't say it like that. I just think that I said But that I can though. That's yeah. the sad part. Yeah. Let you say that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh. I think I said that this is not the best selection. Honey, know. there's a blog about you if you say that shit. <laughs> I know. Okay, that's a viral meme. All right, but yeah, no, but I just feel like, you know, women is the neglect thing they kick, um, which some of that is true, but then I think some of that isn't, you know what I mean? Um, the lack of sex or whatever, spontaneity, they always say the spontaneity, it's not spontaneous, you know, they want to do different things, different things, yeah. and sometimes different things be on some kinky weird shit, so. Yeah, I mean, as I mean, long as it ain't all crazy, right? some things can be accepted. What's the nasty? Ever. I would never say that on this line. Man, we talking. No, I'm not saying anything. Dang, 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 dang. <laughs> nah, I'm not saying I'm in my nose. Hey, 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 h
not saying it. But I know some people out there on Instagram live or Facebook live that also can say that. Mm-hmm. Brandon said he peed in the girl's mouth before, man. Tell us about hey. that. How was it, man? Did she feel all the way up to the top of her mouth? What's right. going on, man? Let us know. Brandon, say it. You just, you just said it, man. Come back and respond. Yeah, Brandon crazy, man. I can't believe he said that. He said he blew in a girl's butt before. He did all of that, man. Blew in a girl's butt. <laughs> Great. Great. Oh, he's talented. I can't, I can't keep saying all this on him, man. I think my grandma will be on this live. She, she'll probably, if I say something like this, she'll like, oh, so this is what we do now on here? <laughs> and on a Sunday. On a Sunday. <laughs> say, no, I don't do that, man. So, I'm going to come back to another side. Um, Max Hunter should be here soon, about 11 minutes or so. Can I just minutes. say rest in peace to Dick Gregory? Yes. Rest in peace, man. Rest in peace legend of comedy, a legend of civil rights, mm-hmm. a legend to his people, always about motivation of people and elevation, man. So Dick Gregory died at the age of 84 yesterday. Yeah. You guys, got, if you don't know who Dick Gregory is, he used to have the Dick Gregory show back in the 60s, and he wrote with Martin Luther King and all that. So he took comedy and he mixed it with social awareness. So rest in peace to Dick Gregory. And shout out to anybody that's a fan of his, you know what I mean, from Delhi Ryan. Yeah. All right, we'll be coming back on the other side, Terrence Simmons Show. Mrs. Fat Booty! Most deaf. we come back. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, we back. Delhi Ground Radio is the Terrence Simmons Show. We live with Fat Me in the Building. I got a special guest in here today. All right, who is? Who is? Nah, no, no, before I even do that, right? Maurice Wright told me about this guy. He was like, yo, you gotta get this guy on my team. He's dope. He's my cousin. I was like, all right, all right. A lot of people tell me that. Huh? That's your brother? It's my little brother. You ain't tell me that? I did. You said it was your cousin. My little brother. All right, little brother. That's my little brother. All right, all right. Now you're looking like. I wanted to tell you the <laughs> name, but I ain't want to say nothing. All right, well, his brother. He's like, you gotta check him out. So I checked out your music. It's dope. Appreciate it. Like, you have a real good, like, insight on music. Uh, I'm gonna bring to the uh, table right now Max Hunter. Yes, sir. What's good, man? What's up, man? Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Not a problem, man. Not a problem. This is terrific, man. This no, we, we are not. It's all about it Max is. Hunter right now. It is, but you have to go to the root. <laughs> no, he's not. Gotta get to the root of things. It's about you. Yes, it but is. But is it not terrific, Max? Listen. Uh, Why is it terrific, man. Max? Uh, it's terrific because when you think about just how people get to where they are, mm-hmm. they take terrific paths. Oh. Right, <laughs> right. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And your brother, yeah. you know, he he's, can, a he, he's a terrific oh, person because man. he connected right the terrificness <laughs> in this room. That's how did he start the terrificness? Do you know? I'm not necessarily sure. Right. I just know it was a guy that he went to school with who and was really terrific. Really terrific. Really terrific. Very terrific. And you're here with a microphone. How is how did it become terrific? I'm oh, curious. Man. We just had We here for Max Hunter right now. I know, but we gotta we gotta set it clear. It's T Money. Oh, AKA okay. Terrific. That's, That's it. Okay. That's it. That is so amazing. never forget. Don't forget it. I, I just need to say. I gotta, it should be the T Money show. I gotta or question. AKA Terrific show. Oh, oh, you. Question. What's the question? What's good. It's all about you. What's good? Was it, was it T Money like you was trying to be like your brother's keeper, G Money, or was it just T Money? <laughs> like? So I told you real quick about my name, T Money, why I got it. Right. Uh, I used to work at the spaghetti warehouse. Okay. And I used to come in the lunchroom with just ones. Right, right. Twenty hours worth of ones. And somebody like, oh T, you got money? And somebody was like, oh T money. So that's when everybody started calling me T money. I could have went to the freebie line and got the chicken, but I wanted to get the chicken that cost three dollars. <laughs> because I'm small. You're not fat like yeah. pie. And, that, and, and that's, that's where the name T money come from. And then terrific just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how I got that name. I was just sitting one day and I'm like, yeah, T Money ain't K Terrific. Oh, no. Nah, I can tell you that. That's a funny ass look on your face. So, Max Hunter, what's good, man? So, um, it's a very inter- interesting story about you and how you got your name. Right. I know it was one of the things, like, uh, it was during the Mummies Parade. Yeah. How you got yeah. Tell me. I know right, right, how right. it is. Right. I want you to tell everybody how you got it. Right. So. I'm born New Year's Day 94, so um, I was supposed to be born like sometime late December. So early morning New Year's, my mom going to labor, blah, blah, blah. So everybody that's from Philly, they know the story of how the mummers is the, all the Broad Street and all that. And we lived on the other side of Broad Street. So um, the hospital was on the opposite side of Broad Street. So my mom going to labor, my dad like, all right, let's go to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. So I'm the youngest, so you get my brothers and sisters together, get my mom in the car, they driving. You can't go across Broad Street, so you park on one side. 
you take everybody out, you might try and carry my mom across. So you know like it's packed, you right. can't get across. He a real nigga, so he just go across, he don't care. So he get across, he gets to the front of the hospital, they like, oh no, it's closed, it's closed, you gotta go to the back, pick her up again, take her around to the back. So you know when you get back there, they like, oh well you gotta fill out a registration and what's Y'all with the Methodist. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. It's right there, but like what's wrong yeah. and whatever. Jackson. Jackson, right, you're right. Yeah. Yep. So he asked him for the information. He like, yo, my wife pregnant, she about to have a baby, F that man, get into a uh, ER room, blah blah blah. So then my mom was like, a cop came and tried to take her. She was like, don't touch me. Only my husband could take me. You know, black people dramatic. <laughs> so then they finally get back there. And like, she had me like, uh, like at night uh, on January 1st. And my dad was just like, man, I ain't going through this no more. This is too much work. This is the max. And my brother was like, oh, you might as well name him Max. He was like, I ain't calling him no shit like that. And then fast forward, they called me Max my whole life. So, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so Max is your real name. No, no, that's my real name. Not Max is just a nickname. Yes, that's right. After your father cursed and got upset, he utilized a religious name. Right. right. Oh, yeah. Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. So, let me ask you, how you getting into music, man? What, what was it? Um, I mean, I was playing basketball already. And, like, just being from Philly, everybody rap, everybody listen to music and stuff right. like that. So, like, when I was in college, I started getting, like, I didn't really want to play basketball no more. Like, I was just like, I don't really know what I wanted to do. I just felt like I wanted to express myself. And I ain't like I ain't wanna rap at first, because I was just like, that's what everybody do when they give up on life. Like, I don't wanna <laughs> rap, man. This shit corny. Yeah. And then like uh I started getting like depressed and all this, so I started going to therapy. And the therapist was just like, yo, like you gotta think about what you think is great about you, blah blah blah. So I was like, I think it's my mind. And he was like, Well, find a way to like outlet your mind. I'm like, white guy, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> right, right. So, exactly. Then I just went home and I just started writing it down, like writing stuff down. And then I was like, yo, this kind of corny. Like, if I'm gonna write it down, I might as well make it rhyme. So then I just started writing like little poems and stuff. And my homie had found like my little book. And he was like, oh, you be rapping? And I don't be rapping. He was like, yo, these is raps. This is hot. I was like, you know what? Get out, dog. And when he got out, I started looking at beats and shit. I was like, let me see if I can find out how to rap on this shit. And then I just started rapping like that. Wow. So that was like basically the story, just like trying to express myself, just getting shit out, start venting. When did you know that you were able to flow? Because I rapped a long time ago. And I did, it's, it's a flow that yeah. you have to have, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't just, you know, just put average words together. You right. have to make them flow. So when did you know you locked your flow? Um, I want to say probably like I started rap when I was 19, so like 2013. But uh, I was lit. I, so I couldn't rap on beat at all. Like I, I could not mm -hmm. find the beat. And I was yeah. like, well, how do you just rap on beat? I yeah. love it. Yep. And I was listening to uh, when Wale and Meek first signed the MMG, they had a song called 100. Mm -hmm. And I just thought the beat was so hot. So I was like, yo, I'm going to listen to this beat until I catch the flow. And I had this whole rap written out and I could not catch the beat at all. Could not catch it, could not catch it. And then I was just playing around, letting the beat play, like washing my face or something. And I just started saying the rap because I knew it by heart now. And I was like, oh shit, that was on beat. And then once I kept doing it, I started practicing that one flow. And I was like, all right, so this is my flow. And then from there, like now when I rap, if I hear a beat, I'll just count like one, two, three. And then just time in different places. So I might be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So then I just play around with flows like that. And then once I get like a flow, like, okay, I like that to this beat. Then I'll start writing a rhyme into that flow like that. So that's how I do it now. That's dope. So we're about to get into the first song. It's called Poetry of My Environment, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a... Uh, so before I get into it, where, 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 what state of mind was you in? What place was you in when you wrote that song? Um, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, so I actually wrote that question. <laughs> so I think uh, it was more like, you see all the stuff happening on the news, like Trey Lamar and Mike Brown, like over the years. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it might have been like 2014-ish, 2015-ish when the Mike Brown thing happened and like, it was like everybody's acquitted, like it's not murder. I was like, yo, like, what is going on in life? Like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. So it just made me start writing, like, from that, like, black point of view. And then I was just kind of like, me wanting to be like, everywhere I come, every, everybody where I come from, like, everybody died, go to jail, like, I mean, normal black neighborhoods and shit. So I was just like, yo, they always say, like, you're gonna be product of your environment. And I was like, now, like, I'm doing something, like, that's positive, and I'm, like, I'm traveling, I'm meeting people, like, I don't want to be a product of it, but, like, I still want to be, like, some source of, like, what the environment, like, is. And I was like, poetry, like, damn. So it just even in that, I just felt like, if somebody not from Philly, like, how do I bring them to Philly and, like, make them understand, like, when you walk off my porch and see the block, 
this is what I see every day, you know what I'm saying? So it was like trying to tell you the real story, but not trying to make it so it's like buy a bunch of drugs, shoot a bunch of people, rob everybody, and you'll be the greatest. You know what I'm saying? Like give them like a real perspective. Like, nah, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to survive in this, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make it out, I'm trying to make sure I live, you know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. So well, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it right now, man. Can't wait, yeah. Man, I'm getting away right now. Here you go, right here. Max Hunt in the building. Let's go. Pull the behind. Let's go. Yeah, Tim, let me show. Yeah. It was Tim, let me show you before. Ugh. You know, I always say that so fast. Yeah, because you ain't say my damn name. That's why you, know you messed what? up. We got special guest, um, co-host D for me in the building. Yes, sir. And we also got Max Hunt in the building, too, as well. You know, I feel like you like on that conscience. The conscious side, as far as though with your music, but it's free. What I mean by that is, is that it's like a, uh, not like you don't. It's, it's like you. I put you in that category, like most deaf. In a sense, would you would you, would you, would you, would you say that? No, I mean, I mean, be honest. Nah. Nah. I say that. Or who you would say? Um, I would say. I mean, just for like nowadays, more time. I feel like it's conscious, but it's more fun. Like, right. I feel like most death was very like conscious, conscious. All right, conscious. all right. I can see. All right. I see. But uh, I would say like I mean Kendrick Lamar, J Cole. Okay. Okay. You know, like just that lane of like people that can still make a song, and you be like, okay, mm -hmm. like he's not trying to preach to me. You know what I'm mm. saying? But it is still good music. I, think. I don't know, man. Like Kendrick Lamar, they, I, I, I say J, J Cole and Kendrick always. I can they like far they always preach. Especially, I mean, not in the sense of they're trying to, you know, pound it in your head, but they give you, like, certain scenarios where it's, though, it's just, like, this This is what it is. Like, you know, his new album, Damn. Right. You know, that, you know, the song Phil and stuff like that. I mean, yo, I feel this way. You get what I'm saying? It's like, I get it, you know, so. I see what you're saying, though. Tell me, tell me about Remember That. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things on there. Mm -hmm. Um, so, with it, I had, like, a... Uh, that's a song I already had from like a mixtape. Yeah. And, um, like a lot of people liked it and stuff like that when I put it on like SoundCloud and stuff. It got like a lot of attention. It was helping me like grow my buzz just in general. Yeah. So um, when I was doing this album, I felt like it fit, but I didn't want to just redo the whole song. So I just wrote like a whole new verse and I wrote it just like as a freestyle. Mm -hmm. But like even in that, it was just more so like, I feel like. Once you start like leveling up, especially in something like rap, where it's like it's not like a foundation that you know, like okay, I'm at this level now, I'm at this level. It's just kind of like you don't really know. Right. But like sports and stuff, it's like okay, like I went all city, then I went to a division one school, then I got drafted in the second round. Like I know where I'm at among other people. With rap, you don't really know. So it's like me reflecting on all the stuff that I did because it's like one of them things like. If you don't really think about where you've been, you're going to be like, damn, am I really doing anything? You know what I'm saying? Like, how far did I really come? So it's like one of them things, like, now I was basically remembering, I was like, yo, I remember, like, I dropped my first mixtape, like, 50 people listened to it. Like, people didn't really care. And I was like, now, like, people ask me to be a part of their shows on tour. People pay me to do shit. So it was like, damn, like, I got to remember that. And as I'm remembering that, I'm telling y'all, like, remember that I told y'all this now, because, like, when I'm there... This is all the stuff that went into me being that nigga, like the way I was telling y'all I was going to be. So it's like that kind of thing, like just remember it. So the verse, I'm just taking you through all of these things. Like even when I start the verse, 3 a.m. and I don't know what city, I've been up all night, but nobody up with me. She told me you ain't rich yet, so you ain't the shit yet. But I came from nothing. I don't really think she get that. Yes, sir. Like, like that's the yeah. point. It's like because that's people though. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's I mean, you popping. I mean, you get a couple shows, you know what I mean? But... You ain't so and so. Yeah. You ain't doing. Oh, they always want to knock you down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always. yeah. yeah. And so it's like, all right, well, remember that. Remember you told me that. Because yeah. when I am that, you ain't nothing you can say to me. We just gotta make eye contact, and it's like, oh damn, he really is that. You, know you, I mean? you, you see your greatness. You you understand. Your yeah, greatness. I think I do. I tell people all the time, like I'm the greatest rapper in my generation. Absolutely. And it's like I'm 23, so after this J Cole, Drake, Kendrick Lamar, Wale, Meek Mill generation. Y'all gonna see. Right. But like until then, I don't expect people to believe me. I don't expect people to be like, yo, you're right. I just expect you I, I expect people to be like, oh prove it. Yeah, you speak okay, cool. Cool. yeah, okay, mm -hmm. cool. I am a firm believer, man. We speak when we say things like that, you speak to the existence. Yeah. Find yeah. This way you have to live it consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I believe that. I mean, even with this show, I mm -hmm. speak it into existence. I suppose I do. 
Best show in the world. Right. Yeah, I tell people that. That is your hashtag. Yeah, that's my hashtag. Right. Best, the best I, show I didn't want to post that. Because I, I think I had, I know I had the best. Right. I, I want you to I, say I put it up there for you. Know? Stroke his ego. His <laughs> <laughs> little penis. Little penis. <laughs> so let's get it, man. Remember that, man. Next one in the building, yo. Yeah. Dummy Ground Radio is a Tanner Turner show. We live and back in the building. D, comedian is the guest. It's co-host. Perfect league, man. Stop saying that. Okay. We got Max Hunter in the building. We do. It's a couple of your songs. Yo, you know, I really appreciate your song, man. I'm just saying they dope. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, like, like, you know, one thing that I always um, tell any artist is that I like their creativity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody that actually thinks about what they're saying and what they're writing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's good to have a party song here and there, but sometimes I don't want to hear that. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe I want to turn up going maybe to the club. I may want to do that, but sometimes I'm vibing, I'm making errors, I'm making runs. You got to have a set of, like, music that's going to, like, really... Uh, take there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just think that some people they just don't do that. You know, uh, just, I can't turn it up in, in a whole hour. Yeah, I just can't. Time. Yeah, I'm just like, look, man, I'm, I'm too tired, man. I just it's it's, it's it's seven o'clock in the evening on a Sunday. I just I can't hear it. You know, um, something I want to get. In. So you said in the beginning that something you clicked out. You said you was depressed. Right. right? Into a depressed stage. Like, what 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 gear did you change? If you don't mind me asking. No, that's cool. Um. Life, honestly, yeah. but uh, like I went to college, played basketball, mm-hmm. and then when I got there, like I'm seven hours away from home, I'm broke, it's all white people, mm-hmm. like, and then I wasn't like a super recruited person, like I was like one of their last recruits, so it was kind of like I wasn't high on the priority list, so it was like all right, whatever. And then when I got there, they was like, oh well, yeah, you are gonna sit out. We don't think you're really ready, so mm-hmm. we're gonna take this year. We gonna work you out. We gonna weight train. We learn the offense. That's all the boring shit that comes for it. So it show you like, damn, this is not really what I really want to be doing. Right. And I feel like that's the difference with great athletes. Like that's still fun to them. With me, it was like you practice all day, you work out all day, you still got classes. They tell you what to eat, they tell you how much to eat, they tell you what to drink. What? Yeah, it's crazy. What college was this? You mind me asking? University of Akron in Ohio. Really? Yeah. Is that the Brian James like area? No? Yeah, his high school coach was the coach. Wow. Yeah. And I met LeBron. He's like the greatest smelling athlete I've ever met in my life. Really? Yeah. Great smelling. LeBron smells amazing after work. I was oh, Really? Oh, 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 wait, oh, what? I'm thrown back. No, I, I'm, no, no I, 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 I understand. Like, so, Listen, so let me paint the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do. Great brother. He turned his hand around, guys. Yeah, so he's he's serious. I'm yeah. from Philly. Right. right. So, I'm listening. Akron is like a small city. The college is the biggest thing in the city. The college basketball team is mm-hmm. the attraction. Mm-hmm. So this is when LeBron leaves Cleveland. He comes to, he goes to Miami already. So he already announced that he's going to Miami. Right. Him and KD, they might be just done the Olympics. They working out in our in our gym. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to a regular basketball with the guard workouts. The guard coach texts me like, yo, come to the workouts at like 830. I'm like, all right, cool. I just come in, you know, put my little coat in, go to the locker, change. Walk in the gym like, oh shit, that's LeBron, yo, wow, damn, and that's KD, but I don't care about KD because that's LeBron. Right. So then after like he know the coach personally, so he cool, and like he sponsors the team, so everywhere you go in the arena, it's LeBron like posters, his create everything's crazy. So afterwards, I'm just like, oh, but like the security guards was like, oh no, y'all gotta wait until they done working out. So I'm like, okay, cool. I go back sit in the locker room. This nigga comes in the locker room. I say, oh shit, LeBron just walked in. Wow. He walk in, he say, what's up to everybody? Shake everybody hand. I was just looking at my hand like, yo, like, when people be like, I'm never washing my hand. I'm not washing, like, I bet not miss a jump shot today. Wow. And then I was just talking to him, just like, oh, what's up with you, blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh, all right, what's your name? Where you from? And I was just like, yo, like, this is LeBron. Like, and then, like, his sweat kind of got on me. And like I low key was like a groupie, like I smelled it. I was like, oh, <laughs> what cologne is this? This shit smell amazing. This right. nigga just working out for two hours. Yeah. So that was like my thirty second interaction with LeBron. But, <laughs> yeah. So so through all of that, you did meet LeBron. Yeah, technically, I don't know if thirty seconds count, but to me it count. Count. Yeah. I touched him. I met him. Wow. I'm man. cool. So you I'm, met LeBron. I'm cool. Man. Yeah. That's so this and this one, like so, do that. Like being in that, in that college and acting, it just wasn't for you at the time. As far as though, you feel as though it was like the dep- you was away from home. Yeah, and it wasn't like and like on top of that, like being away, like people I was growing up with, like people was dying, people was getting killed, so people calling me like, yo, so and so just died. And I'm mm. like, yo, like 
Mm. So it was just like a lot going on, and then it's like I'm there. Like I grew up in the hood my whole life. I don't really know no white people. Mm. So when I get there, eighty percent of the team is white guys, and then it's like a couple black guys from the suburbs, and it's like two black guys from Cleveland. That's who I used to be with, but they was like 21, 22 when I was eighteen. Mm. So it was just kind of like, damn, like I don't really, I can't find a balance here. And then it was like sitting out all the time, like just like, damn, like it's really not fun. Like it was like. Wake up at like seven, be at workouts by like eight. Mm -hmm. Practice gonna start at eleven. You gonna practice from like I had late classes, so I would practice from like eleven to probably like two, and then two fifteen, two thirty was my first class. So I'd be in class from like two to like five thirty. Then I had like a guard workout in between, Dang. and then the last class at like seven. And then like they'll be like, oh, make sure you eat this. You wanna take in this many calories. Drink a couple muscle milks. Be at the workout by this time. Come back to the gym at this time. And then it's like, you gonna do all of that. Like, you're not playing. You're not playing in none of the games. Like, you know what I mean? You're on, like, the practice squad, basically. So Because you're sitting out. So it was like you. Like, it was like a, a transfer student from Ukraine. So I'm like, I'm talking to him. He barely speak English. <laughs> he didn't miss jump shots, though. But he did. He barely speak English. But it was just like that type of stuff. Like, I just couldn't find the vibe. So I just didn't really want to be there anymore. And then... When I left, it was just kind of like, yo, what am I going to do? Like, I played basketball. I played sports my whole life. I'm yeah. like, damn, like, I'm really not going to play sports no more. What am I going to do? And that was just like a lot for me. I'm like, damn, like, I don't. So it's just like. Yeah, you always be struggling basketball, man. He'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was just like, at that point, it was just like, I don't really know what to do. People dying, family going through a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, and then you just a nigga in the hood. Like, you start, these realizations start kicking in. Like, I'm 18, 19. I can't just be dreaming no more. Like, I gotta really start figuring shit out. It's like, that's scary. Mm -hmm. So, with that, I just was like depressed. And so, you endured all that around this age, man. Most people yeah. start, they start kicking in late. You, you was going through it. I mean, depression doesn't have no age on it right. at all, but it's just the idea that like, you're, you're young. Yeah. And, you, and it hits you fast so quick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about that uh, Just Know. Just Know. So that's a perfect segue because Just Know mm -hmm. is like one of them songs where you're going through some shit. Right. You just got to remind yourself <laughs> like, man, at the end of the day, I'm that nigga. Like, I'm going to be everything I said I'm going to be. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when Beyonce be like, I woke up like this. It's not to say that she literally woke up like this, but it's like, I always been this. You know what I'm saying? So right. Just Know. I've been working all night. I don't get no sleep. So when you ask all of them, they going to all know me. I told mm -hmm. them niggas Just Know. Like, like, that's the point. It's like, wherever you started from, you know what I mean? Everybody started at a certain place. But as you're building it up, you got to believe in yourself because ain't nobody else going to believe in you. So you just got to tell yourself, like, yo, I'm going to be that nigga. I'm going to be the greatest in my generation. Like, because I work hard enough. I'm talented enough. Mm -hmm. And I just know it. You know what I mean? And I just feel like that's a thing. Like, oh, you owe me money? I ain't giving you your money. All right, just know. Well, yeah. Eric, Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher, you yeah, know, you you know who yeah, I'm speaking of, know. you know what I mean. And Eric said that there's a wide time, you know what I mean. Everybody has a wide time. Mine is five a.m. After I actually watched the the video, I found my body constantly without alarm clock waking up at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. I have to be ahead of everyone. Yeah. That is why that's my wide time. So. Let me ask you, what time is a good time for you to wake up, be ahead of the game, and start your day? Oh, yeah, I don't be sleeping. So. Right. Because mm -hmm. when you're great, you don't yeah, sleep. You don't sleep. sleep. I don't sleep. all night. Like, even whenever, like, everybody know when I'm recording an album. Like, one thing I always do, I just let, like, all my hair just grow. Like, I might get, like, a shape up or something. But I just be letting my hair grow just to feel free. And then I be up all night for, like, days at a time, weeks at a time, just be up. So like um, even like last night we was all up last night, but that was the first time I was up since I really finished my album. And I was like, damn, like I was up all night. Right. But like just in general, I would say probably like two, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Like I'm up, I'm doing stuff, I'm figuring out stuff, I'm writing verses, I'm going through three hours of beats of producers I never met before. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through random producers' websites that I never met before, listening to their beats to catch one. Do you have your own team, like manager, promotions, and all, or are you not? Nah, I'm, I'm everything. I get help with stuff, yeah, yeah, but like for the real thing, real thing, like I'm, I'm doing everything. And I've noticed that with a lot of indie artists, you know what I mean? Like, you know, that's why I said God bless somebody like Chance the Rapper, you yeah. know what I mean? Because you made it, you know what I mean, on your own recognizance with some yeah. supports. 
But no, I mean he's not attached to a label. I was about to say Chance. Chance got an answer next to the name. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But no, I'm just stating as far as business was. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? As far as like having the two supports that he has, and then it was just him. You know, right. without the labels and all of that. Yeah, so, yeah, are you planning on being one of those artists that signed to a label, maybe shelf, or you want to be just independent, a free agent? No, nah, see, all right, so with that, uh, with nowadays internet and like all of these streaming services, you could build up a fan base just on your own. So like even now, I would say like my fans are probably in like the hundreds. You know what I mean? Almost a thousand. Cause I get like uh, my first album, Black Art, uh, had like seventeen thousand streams. So it's like I get a lot of streams because everybody streams music, but it's hard to gauge. Mm-hmm. So with that, I was just more so like, all right, let me figure out how to like meet people in different places, introduce myself to people in different places. And so all that to say, as I'm building it up, I want to sign it to a label like as a partner. You know what I mean? So it's more like a distribution deal. And like, I don't need you to record the music. I don't need you to tell me who to work with. I don't need you to pay for anything. Right. I just need you to pay to get it distributed, to put it in certain places that I can't get right. it to. Mm-hmm. But it ain't necessarily like, yeah, I feel like nowadays you don't need a label because before a label was just like, you can't get out to the public without the label. Right. They had all the connections, all the major marketing. Mm-hmm. Now you can just fly to LA and you can just know what You can people. email your trace. You can email people. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Like, none of the producers on there is from Philly. Right. I know them all through email. I never met them a day in my life. That's great. You know what I mean? So it's like you can get out that way. And yeah. like, I feel like once you get enough revenue generated just on your own like with me you got the music that i sell i market then i do shows then i do like speaking engagements you got the website where like my merchandise is mm-hmm. you build all of that up you could take that to a label it's like a business plan and just be like yo like i just want a partnership you don't gotta pay me no money you don't gotta give me no advance i just want to use y'all up for marketing y'all can make y'all money y'all can take half of whatever the marketing bill is and give me the rest and how did you learn all this, this? Uh, studying it. I'm one of the people, if I'm doing something, I'm going to watch documentaries. Like, I watch documentaries for fun. So, I'm going to watch documentaries. I'm going to read some shit about it. What was the most infectious documentary that you have seen that motivates you to this way of thinking? Um, Probably wasn't even a documentary. It was probably, like, just Jay-Z. Like, listening to his interviews, listening to his music. And I'd be telling people, like, yo, that guy's another level. But, like, listening to, like, his interviews and, like, even when he talked about, like, how they had Rockefeller and then they took it to Jeff Jam, like, I was just like, damn, he did that in 96. Like, yeah, oh, shit. I saw one that was really good, and I do know what you're saying, yeah. um, when he said, you know, all those different videos you saw us and all that, and we, we would just get our homeboys that did detail and work for the luxury cars, and then they would, we would say, yo, grab that car for that night. Right. And then we'll just get our camera guy, right. and then we made it look like we had money, and he yeah. said... When they went to clubs, they made sure, okay, you know, we ain't got nothing. Put on your best yeah. shirt, your best outfit for when we go in the club. And they all made sure they met up together and went as a large group. Yeah. So then every time Rockefeller went into a club, they came in the club like they were the yeah. man and all that. And the word got out. But they sent, and Jay-Z said, he said, we had nothing. Yeah. He said it was a homeboy that borrowed a car from the job. We had our best shirt on that one, but we had some dingy pants on, but nobody would know because we pulled up in that fly whip. Yeah. But he said they had nothing, but they had to make it look like yeah, they had so and then that's yeah. when the labels started calling like who are these guys right, that right. have money but they don't right. you know okay let's get into it just know right here the yeah 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 uh, Tarantino show we back before the fact me in the building max hunter is here you know i'm um, definitely good dude you know got some good vibes man yeah, definitely uh, ahead of your time yeah you are ahead of your time man i can tell i can tell that man just by the way you talk like right. the way you uh you know, you're you're serious. Yeah. You know, some people come in, they're not serious. I think he does yoga. Yeah, I don't know. The way he moves, it, it just he blink. He has not blinked one time right. since he's been here. Right. He's a killer, actually. Yeah. I was like, yo, why you not blinking, man? Somebody be worried about yeah. man. Like, bro, he's your brother. They got one of his guns with him in the, in the corner. Yeah. You know, he came with security uh, in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so you have the home, you said the homecoming, and uh, you said yeah. something. So uh, I'm trying to get um, more into like the college circuit, uh, like heavier. Like I join. Like, uh, I feel like college students like they, they are like the the crowd. And I'm only 23, so I'm around college student age. But like they're the crowd that usually support. So like even when labels are trying to break artists, like if they're an urban artist, they just send them to like HBCU tour, college tour, and then they come back, open up for like a bigger artist, and then the album come out. So it's like, I can do that on my own. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, let me go find these people at these colleges. That's smart. Let me reach out to them. The colleges um, are the future. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And those are the people who go and run all the labels, all the corporations in five, ten years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I went to college. I just didn't. I just, I went. 
Yeah. And I didn't graduate. I didn't, I didn't go to school. <laughs> I was just in there. Right. Yeah. No, that's a fact. I went to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. But yeah, it's just uh, get more with the college circuit. Um, mm -hmm. Like even now, uh, like it's like a couple people I'm talking to about management, and then like just trying to get on to like a tour or two also. Yeah. So, Tours so, is where it's at. Yeah. So that's, that's really something cool. to look forward to, to uh, for the end of the year, and then uh, begin the early next year. Okay. So you got your, your schedule all planned out, what you want to do, man. Yeah, a lot of it, yeah. Where you see yourself in five years with your music? Yeah, five years. Man. Yeah, five years. Actually, three years, because you, you moving pretty quick. So three let's years. say three years. Three years, I'm 26. That is the number one album in the country. Mm. Come on. Um, Shane, get this. It's a Grammy. Um, and it's just three years, it'll be a new generation that I feel like they'll be like, oh, no, this is the guy, and he got to prove himself more. But I feel like at that point, it'll be solidified, like, nationwide. Like, okay, these are the five rappers that we're looking at as the guys of the next generation. I feel like then you'll be like, oh, shit, you really was saying that already. Are you better at writing? Wait a minute, wait a minute, Dave. What? Do not edit Shane. You heard what he said, right? Yeah. Okay, can't good. You can't oh, yeah. just keep it. Like, we're going we gonna to put this film on eBay. <clears throat> Three years, shit gonna be like half a million. Okay, wow, that's dope. It up there. They be like, this nigga really said this. Shit. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Are okay. you good at freestyling or writing? Um, I could freestyle. I think writing is just more therapeutic, so mm -hmm. I'd rather just write because like the the art of rapping to me is like writing it and then finding a way to say it, delivery and all that. I would much rather write, but freestyling, I just play around. Everybody's with the freestyle now. I mean, that's can where I, I would say, wait, can I get a beat? I don't have a beat. I, I mean, I can give them a beat. That's you give them a beat? Oh, I don't want to be that. I mean, I don't have, it's not on there, D. Like, you You're not on there. No, you don't see it. Wait, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. 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 people in my life was really like like scheming to do stuff because they felt like an opportunity was there and like 
for the people who is just like on the outside looking in, like my family gonna be my family regardless. So whether I got a million dollars and no dollars, they gonna treat me the same. It's the people that's around that it's like, damn, I can't trust this. So it's like when people was like, oh, you going to a division one school? Like everybody wanted to be cool. Everybody wanted to invite me places. And then at 17, 18, you just like, oh, okay, cool. They showing me love as they should. Mm -hmm. But once I got older and you, then I stopped playing basketball and I said I wanted to rap. And people was like, what the fuck, y'all? Like, what are you doing? Like, ah, man. You know what I mean? And, like, I remember I was working in a sneaker store. And a uh, boy that's just, like, from the hood, he came in one day. He's like, oh, what's up with you? Like, you work here? And I was like, yeah. He's like, damn, what happened to basketball? And I was like, I don't play no more. And he was like, what? Like, you was the one, bro. Why you stop? And he just said it so, like, subconsciously that I was like, damn, I didn't even know people thought about me like that. Mm -hmm. So it kind of made me, like, it put me in that mindset of, like, the next time I watch He Got Game, I was like, damn, I could feel the pressure because he was literally the one for yeah. the hood, the projects. And I'm like, damn, I could feel the pressure of, like, what he was really going through. Because I'm like, one person said it to me, and I was like, damn, I didn't even know. So everybody saying it to him. You should go to this college, and then you see like his girl manipulating them to like yeah, good shit because she tried to guarantee her future in it. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of parallels. So even when I was doing the song, it was just me more so relating like everything I was going through to like when I played basketball. I'm like, okay, cool. So now I'm making all of these decisions, and people ain't really fucking with it because I don't want to do basketball no more. But then once I start building it up and rap. Then it's like, oh shit, you doing this, or you went there, or you met this person, or you just saw with this person. Oh damn, what's up with you, bro? How you been, man? I see you moving. And that'd be the weird thing is like, I got like 2,000 followers on Instagram, so like I might get a picture with like 30 likes, 40, 50 likes, whatever. Mm -hmm. But when I run into a person, they be like, oh, I just seen you was in LA, you was in the studio with so and so, bro. I see you working, keep doing your thing. And I'd be like, let me go look to see if you like this picture. No, you ain't like this. Mm -hmm. But you be watching. Mm -hmm. right? So it's like yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like when Jay Z be like, the streets is watching. Like people always watch it. So that's like the thing with Jesus Shuttlesworth. It's like you do something at a high level and then you stop and then you get to see who really fuck with you. Because mm -hmm. like, that's why I'm like, he gonna be my brother regardless. When I'm playing basketball, he was like, okay, I'm gonna support you. I wanna rap. Okay, I'm gonna support you. Like, so I don't expect none of them to change. It's the other people around it. Mm -hmm. So like even in, um, even in uh, Just Know, I got the line, I say, uh, I watched my girl leave, she told me I was too me, told me I'm a new me, like mm. she really knew me. Maybe I was shallow and maybe she was too deep, mm. or maybe I'm a genius and nobody really seen me yet. Like, because it's me trying to balance this, like, when I was playing basketball, like, you was really fucking with me, you, you know what I mean? And then I didn't want to do that no more, and I'm trying to figure out my life, and like, now we not working, what's going on? So it was like, she telling me, oh, you changing, and blah, blah, and I'm like, am I changing, or do you never just, you never knew me? You know what I'm saying? Oh, are you changing, or are you changing, or exactly. is she not evolving? Yeah. Mm. So it's like, and she's not evolving. That's exactly what it is. But it's like, also, and, and he got game, that was the thing with Jesus. Like, he was going away, and like, he went to go on college uh, meetings and stuff, and she's just like, oh, I know you was messing with girls, and I know this is like, yo, I'm just trying to find out where I want to play basketball. You worried about shit that don't even matter and the whole time she messing with another nigga mm. so it's like damn like this is the subconscious like your guilty so conscience she, coming she, she, that goes into women why girl she <laughs> yeah we know why girl that's the topic at the beginning of the show you just killed the fire right there neglected she felt neglected because you chasing your success god damn it so that's what it's show your, is coming you right stop right. saying that I mean I didn't know that, that wasn't your name I'm sorry I just wasn't I was never darn it it was my it was team money aka we want to get into the song, man. That was a good one, man. I really appreciate that. She felt neglected. That's what so we said neglect, like, right, Shane? We yeah. Like, yeah. Because she didn't, she wasn't getting that attention. Right. right. You trying to go? But crazy. she was a con artist the whole time. The whole time. Playing games. Mm, okay. Playing games. All right, we to get into it. Jesus, um, Jesus, so what he got game. Max Hunter. Let's go. Okay, we back. Deli Ground Radio is a Tim Sunday show. We got Max Hunter in the building. Max, we about to get out of here, man. Let everybody yeah. know what's your Instagram. Facebook and how people can reach you and everything. Yeah, Instagram and Twitter um, at Max Hunter M A X H U N T E R I Z M at Max Hunterism. Uh, you can always stay connected to me on there. Follow me, add me, whatever. Um, my website too, also MaxHunterTV.com. You can stream free music. You can get merchandise. You can stay connected with every events I'll be doing, stuff like that. Um, also, you can always search uh, Max Hunter on YouTube. Um, my new video, Max Hunter uh, 1994, you search it on YouTube, you, uh, watch my new video. Um, for this album, it came out July 4th, so we're going to do a video every, the first of every month. So the first of every month, I'm going to drop a new video uh, for a song on a project. And um, whatever streaming services you use, wherever you buy your uh, digital music from, 
Um, you can order hard copies uh, from my album on my website, maxonetv.com. But if you don't want hard copies, use Tidal, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora. You buy music off of iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Search Max Hunter on any of it. You'll be able to get my whole catalog, both albums. Okay, good, good, man. We about to get out of here, man. I appreciate you. You definitely got to come back to the channel. Oh, I appreciate that. Hey, bro. Not a problem, bro. Not a problem, man. RSVP, RSVP is up next. These are the people that are always bringing pizza with no soda. We about to get out of here, y'all. All right. Out. Peace. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Max Hunter, man. Maximilian, Maximilian, the black guy. Make sure you tune in to my man, Terry Show. Every Sunday, 6 to 8 p.m. It's the best show in the world.